Hello everybody and welcome to our second episode of Docker Donnerstag or Docker Thursday in English. In this episode we will have a look at Docker for Windows. So let's get started. Docker recently announced the stable release version for Docker for Windows. But to actually use it you have to fulfill some requirements. One of these requirements is that you have to run a machine with Windows 10 Pro Enterprise Education and the November update on it. Additionally, the machine needs to be 64-bit. The installer will enable Microsoft Hyper-V because all Docker containers will run inside a Hyper-V virtual machine. If the installer enabled Hyper-V, you are no longer able to run the Docker Toolbox, which uses VirtualBox. VirtualBox and Hyper-V are not able to run on the same system. The Docker for Windows environment comes with the Docker Engine, the Docker Compose, the Docker Machine feature, and even the GUI with Kitematic, but you need to install Kitematic manually. This is not installed uh, natively with the installer itself. So let's have a look at how we can use Docker for Windows. So the first step in using actually Docker for Windows is we need to download it and you can get it from Docker and you've got the option to choose between the stable channel and the beta channel. I already download the uh, Docker for Windows version. In my case, because I participated in the beta program, I'm already running the uh, Docker for Windows beta version. So after you downloaded Docker for Windows, you are able to start the Docker engine. In my case, I didn't start the Docker engine yet. So we will do this now. So the Docker engine will execute in the background. You can see the small Docker icon in your taskbar and it will uh, inform you once Docker is started. Um, I will wait until the process is done, but we will speed this up in the video. So now we got the information that we can start uh, using Docker Compose or start hacking with Docker. That's what we will actually do. We will start the uh, PowerShell and use the Docker engine. So we'll start with uh, executing the um, Windows PowerShell. And what we can do is we can check if the Docker engine is uh, running and we can communicate with the uh, Docker engine. So we will execute Docker info to get the information about our Docker host. And what you can see is that it's running the newest version of Docker, in this case 1.12. And what we will do next is we will execute our first Docker container and we will use the classic hello world container. So docker run hello dash world. And what we can see is that the uh, Docker engine will go to the uh, Docker hub and uh, download the uh, hello world uh, container uh, or Docker image and execute the Docker uh, container afterwards. And this is the same as you would uh, running the command under uh, a Linux environment. And what actually happens is that the uh, installer installed a, a virtual machine inside Hyper-V that's running a, a Linux version, which will um, which is used for communicating with the uh, on Docker Hub and executing all Docker containers inside a Linux environment. So it's not running natively uh, in the Windows environment, but actually it's running uh, all containers inside a Linux environment running on Microsoft Hyper-V. So our next step is to start a, a Ubuntu Docker container and to actually communicate with the container. So we have a running or working Linux inside our Windows environment. So what we will do is docker run dash it for interactive shell. Uh, Ubuntu bin bash and what you can see is the uh, Ubuntu image isn't uh, available locally so the docker engine will actually go to the docker hub and download the latest uh, Ubuntu image and we will be able to uh, connect with this in a few seconds and we are inside our Ubuntu container so if we run an ls command, so after executing our Ubuntu container, um, our next step will be to um, execute a web server. 
So what we will do is docker run on detached mode and we will use the port uh, uh, port uh, 8080 80 to 80 for the nginx uh, container and what you see is nginx isn't found locally so the same as previously we go to the docker uh, hub and uh, download the latest uh, nginx uh, image and we will speed this up and fast forward to the moment we actually execute the nginx server so now the nginx server is running and if we go for docker uh, ps we actually can see that the uh, host is running and we see that the 8080 port is mapped to port 80 on the uh, nginx container and now you will connect to our nginx server so we will go to our web browser and we will go to localhost port 8080 so what we will do is um, localhost port 8080 and what you see is our nginx uh, server so we are running currently an nginx container inside our docker environment on windows and we are able to just use our local host a reference to contact our nginx container so after using all the command lines to uh, get our docker images our next step will be to use kitematic so for this we need to go to our docker icon and use open kitematic this will execute kitematic and we need to provide our docker hub user name and password in this case this is oryx and my password and what you see is we are connected to docker hub and uh, we can uh, just download and execute our docker containers so what we will do is we will execute a ghost and that's a blogging platform and we will run create and it will connect to the docker hub and uh, download our container and we will speed up uh, the result in the video and now the our docker container is executed and we see the logs of our docker container and now we can see that we can reach our docker container so what we'll do now is we will hit web preview and it will start our web browser and connect to our uh, ghost container so as you can see in this case my default host is uh, web browser is not um the internet explorer but uh, google chrome and you can see that it's running the ghost platform so we can actually use it uh, another nice thing we can actually do is we can uh, restart stop the containers on the left side you can actually see all the containers uh, on this host and you can see that our nginx container is still running so if we um click on the on our nginx container you can see the current log files uh, log output and you can see the web preview of our uh, uh, nginx host so in our next step we will use uh, a file system from our windows host and mount it actually in our docker containers so what we need to do for this to work we actually need to go to the settings and there is a the shared drives uh, option and in this case we will use the e drive because there's nothing on it so we will select this drive and hit the apply button and they will ask us for our username and password to actually uh, allow the docker uh, engine to use the uh, windows file system so i provide my username and credentials And after that, our uh, Docker containers are able 
to access uh, our Windows host file system. So how we will test this is we will go to our command line and we will execute our docker run interactive um, uh, slash v for e for our e drive and we will mount it to our uh, mnt and we will use on Ubuntu image. And if we go to slash MNT, we see that this is, um, that it actually can see our Windows drive. Um, if you have a close look, you see that's the system volume information. And what we will do is we will create a folder and we will cr uh, create a file. So mkdir uh, make directory, uh, test folder and we will touch uh, a file in this case uh, every thing as code run ls and you can see we created both we created the, uh, the file and the folder so in our next step we will look at the uh, actually actual um, file system and see if we can see both files so using the Windows File Explorer. And as you can see on uh, our disk E, uh, we've got the folder and we've got the, um, the file we created. So this is a way to actually use um, the Windows file system inside your Docker containers. So this was the last step in our Docker Donnerstag with Docker for Windows. I hope you liked this episode. It's the first episode in English and if you would like to suggest uh, an idea for one of our next episodes uh, hit us on Twitter or uh, leave a comment down below.